We just need to mux the signals together and amplify it up. So I'll, I, I'll actually pause there for one quick demo. Uh, no, actually I won't. I'll come back to that one. So in terms of the, the, the BTS itself, um, so we've, we've got the, the IME for the ham radio side. What do we need for the GSM side? It's actually pretty easy. Um, you need a, a USRP, Universal Software Radio Peripheral. Um, these things are available online. They're, they go for about $1,500 with uh, the, the two daughter boards that you need. Um, I'd also recommend if you're going to get into GSM, um, check out the Clock Tamer. The URL's up here. Um, the thing about Clock Tamer is that um, the, in GSM, the handsets derive their timing from the base station. So the base stations have extremely accurate clocks, and the handsets figure out how much their own frequency is drifting compared to the tower. So if I come along with a, a third-party tower, if my frequency stability doesn't match that of the local towers around me, all of your phones are going to be calibrated to those local towers, and you're not even going to see my tower because I'm you know, maybe just a few kilohertz off. Um, Clock Tamer actually gives me plus or minus 100 hertz accuracy at 1.9 gigahertz. Um, that's in its out-of-the-box configuration. It's about 0.26 parts per billion accuracy. Um, and then you can get a, a GSM, uh, I beg your pardon, a, a, a GPS module um, that drops it down to you know, something ridiculous. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy accuracy. And it's, it's all programmable and, and very flexible. It's, it's highly recommended. On the software side, um, just a laptop computer, uh, Debian, OpenBTS, and Asterisk. Um, OpenBTS provides the, soft, the, the, the GSM stack, and then Asterisk uh, takes the calls in from OpenBTS and sends them out over the, the backhaul as voice over IP. It's a fairly basic base station. Um, it does do voice, it does do SMS, it does not do data. And in fact, for the purposes of this, this demonstration, I've even disabled SMS. Um, purely because there's uh, no way I can get your caller ID easily. So when you send an SMS, yes, I can route it out through the internet and connect it to where it goes, but um, the, the person who receives it is not going to know who it's from, and they're not going to be able to reply. So I figured it was just easier to disable it, but the system does support it. So let's, let's get the BTS going here. So um, I wanted to... Uh, see if we can get some, some video here. Um, is there a camera that we can get up on stage or do you need me to turn the screen around? Okay. Ah. So I'm actually just going to plug in my USRP now. Uh, that's all on and then start the base station. Um, or try to, if it would actually start. Let's try this again. And there we go. So OpenBTS is up. Um, I don't know how much detail you're going to be able to see on the screen here um, with the, the, the camera zooming in. Um, one thing I do want to show you is uh, the Timsys command. So I don't know if you can actually make that out on the screen. The command I typed was Timsys, T-M-S-I-S. Um, what that shows me is a list of all of the, uh, the temporary IMSYs that have been allocated by the base station. In other words, how many people are currently associated with it. So you can see right at the bottom here, uh, zero Timsies in table. So I've started it up clean. There's you know nothing there. Nobody's connected. A couple of other things I'm going to show you as well. Um, I'm just going to turn this around so I can type. So a couple of other commands that I've typed here. Um, cell ID, that shows you that my mobile country code that I'm using at the moment is 001. Uh, in the GSM specification, country code 1 is test. Um, I'm then using a mobile network code, an MNC of 01. So again, that's test. Um, so I'm a test network in a test country. I'm operating on a non European cellular, uh, sorry, a non American uh, cellular frequency. And then if you look at the bottom here, uh, the, the short name of the network that I'm, I'm starting is called DEFCON 18. 
Um, some phones will display that, others won't. But the, the point that I want to make across is that at the moment this is in a non-hostile configuration. It's in a test mode, it's not advertising any known network, it's not operating on a US cellular frequency, and certainly as it started up, nobody was connected to it. So I'll leave that running for a few minutes. Um, if people really want to do a scan for the network, you can, um, but I prefer people to just leave their phones alone. Just you know, take it out of your pocket every couple of minutes, try and make a call, see if it's actually handed over. Because um, we'll, we'll, I'll come back to this in just a sec and, and you know, show you how easy it is to make phones hand over here. So we've got the BTS in test mode. How do we then make this into an IMSI catcher instead of just a, a random cellular network? Well, the way that cell phones identify the network is by two values. I mentioned them already, the mobile country code, mobile network code. Mobile country code, 310 for USA. There's, there's a full list on Wikipedia for every country around the world. Um, three digit number, not really that hard to spoof. Um, mobile network code, again, two, or three, two digit number, maybe a three digit number that you can look up on Wikipedia. Not really much security there. Um, it's pretty trivial to change it. You can, um, I'll, I'll show you in a sec how to do it on, on OpenBTS. Um, it's not hard. It's, it's really not hard. And then once I've, I've set the MNC and the MCC, I can change the network name as well. So that when it displays on your phone, instead of seeing DEF CON 18, you'll see you know, whatever network it is that, that, uh, that I want you to see. In most cases, um, well, in some cases, um, I've noticed that handsets will not hand across to the base station unless the short name of the network, the, the, the network name, um, is entered case correctly. So it's kind of sad when the security of your cell phone calls comes down to a case-sensitive string comparison. Not much security there. So that's really all that's involved in spoofing a network. So let's come over here and actually do it. Um, before I do, I'm just going to type Timsies again. Wow, that's 15 people. 15 handsets are currently connected to my tower. And, and that's without spoofing any cellular network. So 15 people in this room are currently having their, their cellular phone calls intercepted by me, and my BTS is not advertising any known network in the world. It's in a test mode, it's on a non-frequency, and you're still connecting. Um, one quick thing, um, raise your hand if you have an iPhone. Okay, if you do not have your hand in the air, you're probably not connected to my network. Um, in my experience, it's, it's generally the iPhones that, uh, that, that connect most easily. Um, it, it's actually been quite the bane of my existence trying to keep the damn iPhones away. <laughs> I, I kid you not, it's, it's impossible to get rid of the damn things. So, okay. So we have, oh wow, we now have 30 Timsies in the table. Uh, you know, people are still handing over to this. So in the, in the few seconds that it took me to explain why there's 15 people, um, 15 more people connected. It's insane, it's, it's really easy to do. So let's, let's spoof an MNC and an MCC. So I mentioned the cell ID command. So that shows you the MCC, MNC, location area code, and cell ID. I can then do cell ID. Um, quick question for the audience. Raise your hand if you'd like me to spoof T-Mobile. OK. Raise your hand if you'd like me to spoof AT&T. <laughs> Should have seen that one coming. OK. So. I'm just going to turn this around. Um, all I do is I type cell ID, and then I give it the mobile country code. Well, we're in the States, so our mobile country code here is 310. And then I give it a mobile network code. Well, AT&T's mobile network code, the, the, they have several, but the most common one that they use is 410. So let's type that in. And then I'm going to leave the, the, the location area code and the cell ID the same, so that's going to be 666 and 10. That's it. I'm now spoofing AT&T. Um, I could you know, be a little more careful about it. 
I can do uh, config. So here, the uh, the cell ID command here, 310-410-666-10, that sets my, my mobile country code and my mobile network code. And then this command down here, config gsm.shortname at ampersand t. And as far as your cell phones are concerned, I am now indistinguishable from at and t. So, uh, the question was, how long does it take to hand over? That's kind of the point of the talk, in all honesty. Um, from this point, so at this point, we have an IMSI catcher. Um, I, can, I can sit here and, and over the next 20 minutes, half an hour, every AT&T cell phone in the room will gradually hand over to my network, gradually start giving me all your traffic. Um, so from this point on, the only question becomes, how can we make phones hand over more rapidly? Um, in, in practice, um, it might sit here for an hour before you know, a, a, any, any significant number of phones connect. So we, we want some, some techniques to speed it up. So at this point, we do have a simple IMSI catcher. We're spoofing a cellular network. Clearly, handsets in the audience are handing across to me. Has anyone actually tried to make a call and hear the, the recorded warning message yet? Yeah, one here, another at the back, another over here. So yeah, I mean, clearly you guys are handing over, you know, you're connecting to my network. I'm, I'm getting all of your traffic. So how do we filter this down? Well, firstly, um, I now know your IMSIs. Um, so I can filter based on IMSI. If I know the IMSI of the specific person that I want to target, I can exclude everyone but that IMSI. Likewise, I can do the same with the IMEI, which is the equipment serial number, the equipment identifier. Um, I can say, you know, only allow Nokias to connect or only allow iPhones to connect. I'm not sure you can quite get it down to that level of granularity, but so you can say this particular IMEI is allowed to connect and nobody else is. So I, I could restrict it down to a, a limited set by, by, you know, various different parameters. As I mentioned, it, it takes time for people to migrate across. We can make it faster, and I'm going to talk about some techniques for that in a sec. One major limitation that this current system has, it only intercepts outbound calls. So when you're attached to my tower, as far as T-Mobile, AT&T is concerned, your phone is off. It has no signal, it's, it's, you know, whatever, it's just not there, because you're not connected to one of their towers. So when a call comes in, it'll just go straight to your voicemail. We can. We can get around this, I'll, I'll come back to that. But for the moment, we've got you know, outbound calls um, getting recorded. So how do we speed up handover? Um, you know, we, we don't want to be sitting here all day watching everyone's phones hand over, so you know, what techniques have we got to, to speed up that process? Well, there's actually a few. Um, neighbor list, changing lack, band jamming, receive gain. I'm going to talk about all of these individually. Um, some of them I'll demo, some of them I won't. Um, but there's, there's lots of different ways to do it. The first one is GSM neighbors. So each tower, each GSM tower, um, when a phone connects to it, um, the phone will retrieve from it a list of neighbors. And what that means is um, each GSM base station is on a specific channel, obviously. Um, the, the, the base station will say there are base stations nearby on these other channels. And what your phone will do is it will take that list of neighbors and it will monitor all of those channels and it will keep watching you know, the signal strength on all those, those neighboring towers. And when one of those neighboring towers becomes a, a stronger signal, it will hand over. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well. All we need to do is we know that the, the cell phone is going to be monitoring these neighboring frequencies. So if we do a survey of the local area and find out what neighbors are around, we can then compare that to what frequencies the phone can actually see, um, what towers it can connect to and, and whatever. And eventually we can find a, a channel that is advertised as a neighbor, but perhaps it's on the other side of the tower. So you can't actually see it from here. So I can put up my, my tower on a frequency that I know your phones are listening to and that I know there isn't a tower there so that you know, the moment that base station pops up, your phones are all going, oh, okay, we must have driven down the street and this tower is now closer, so I'll, I'll just hand over to it. So how do we do this? Um, it's actually pretty easy. Um, the,